to my channel. So today I'm doing another inspired look. This one is the Ariana Grande side to side music video and it is a hair and makeup tutorial. When I saw the video I was obsessed with her pink eyeshadow look. It's kind of the one where yeah like her hair is all like this and I just think she looks incredible. It was like a pink glittery winged out kind of smoky eye and quite like a brown tone nude lip so again quite different for me but yeah I absolutely love how this came out and I love the makeup that she was wearing she looked incredible in the video so make sure to give it a thumbs up if you like the look of this makeup and hair tutorial and yeah so let's go ahead and get started <music> Okay, so starting off completely at fresh face, I am gonna get my hair out of the way because we will do that after. And we are gonna go straight on to the eyes. To prime our eyes, we are gonna use the MAC Painterly Paint Pot and then going in with this Too Faced Bon Bon Choc Chocolate Bon Bon Palette and taking this light brown color to start off our kind of transition from light to dark. You guys know the drill, I'm using my MAC 224. It's become my all time favorite initial kind of transition color blending brush as well as obviously my Sigma E40. But yes, I am just blending that into my socket. Going in with this color here called Mocha to further deepen up the crease on a slightly smaller crease brush. I believe that this is a MAC or maybe it's Sigma, I'm not sure. Either one of those, probably an E25 from Sigma and just yeah, blending that into the crease and applying as much of the product as you want to build up the color intensity that you want. It was definitely a pink focus on the lid and I didn't really get a good enough picture to see what kind of crease colors she was going with but the Too Faced Bon Bon palette that pink shade that's in it just called to me so I'm just using the colors that are in there. And then I'm mixing these two purple shades from the Morphe 35B palette because she definitely had a really dark purple crease going on. So I'm taking an even smaller crease brush and just taking that from inner corner to outer corner. Corner? Corner. And I'm making sure it is blended seamlessly by going back in with the brushes that we used previously. It was this colour that inspired me to do this whole look. This is from the Too Faced Bon Bon palette, like I said. And it's this pink shade, and I'm just pressing that all over the lid. It wasn't as pigmented as I wanted it to be, so I did have to dip my brush in it a few times. But I think if you probably used MAC Fix Plus, you would have got a lot more pigment from it. But just pressing that all over the lid, and obviously building up the colour intensity that you want. And then going back in with those two purple colours again, just blending the crease and the lid shade together. So it's all one big fat gradient across your eye. Her crease didn't look too intense, so I'm just taking this dark brown from the same palette on a really small defined fluffy crease brush. And yeah, just concentrating that on the outer part of our eye and kind of taking it into the purple shades. You guys know, just blendy, blendy, blendy. You can see I'm mixing up all the brushes again just to make sure it's all seamless. Now it's time for the glitter. Yes, taking the Too Faced glitter glue and I'm just pressing that on it to the lid or kind of just basically where I want the glitter to go. And then I'm taking the Sigma Bewitched glitter, which I'm pretty sure is out of stock or discontinued but MAC Reflex Pink is exactly the same as this so I will leave that linked down below if you want to get that instead. I'm just pressing that on top of the glue. I'm obsessed and then I'm going back in with the brush that we used to apply the lid colour just to make sure that the pink still shines through and everything is blended. For the inner corner highlight I'm taking this really light iridescent pink and mixing it with the highlight shade and yeah just pressing that into my in a corner as intensely as I wanted it to be. I also took that on my brow bone as well. This is my favorite part, you guys know. I'm just cleaning up the mess underneath my eye and creating that sharp, sharp wing to also give us a really good base for when we do liquid eyeliner. Speaking of which, I'm taking the Ico Fat Liquid Eyeliner Pen and applying these Ardell Double Wispies and I did put individuals on the end to make them a bit more winged out. I couldn't tell if she was wearing false lashes and if she did, they were super wispy and natural so these are perfect for that. She had really dark and defined brows as well so I'm obviously going to be using my Anastasia Dip Brow in Medium Brown for that. And now onto the skin. I'm using the NYX Angel Veil. I've never known anyone to be so excited for skin. I'm using the NYX Angel Veil Primer and just buffing that all over my skin to make sure we have a really nice base. I used to think this was really like illuminating, but it's actually not. It's more sort of smoothing, but it does have a slightly dewy finish to it. For foundation, I'm using the MAC Studio Fix Fluid. I've noticed her makeup artist uses a lot of MAC, and she obviously is a Viva Glam ambassador for MAC, so I just took a guess and assumed she might have used this foundation because her skin looked super flawless, and 
quite full coverage. So speaking of that, we are going in with the Maybelline Okay, I've had a mind blank. The Maybelline Lumi Touch Magic concealer pen something like that basically it has a really cool brush and I love it for defining the winged liner because it allows you to get super close and then I went a bit extra and kind of defined my eyebrows as well and I literally I never do that didn't notice much of a difference but I kind of liked it but I'm then just blending it out with my beauty blender as always because I feel like I put quite a lot on but I did want it to be quite bright and full coverage so this is just going to absorb any of the excess product you guys know I've explained the way a beauty blender works many a time and that is why it is brilliant to set underneath my eyes and bake with I'm not just using my RCMA powder this time but oh my god there's a tiny real technique sponge made this so so easy I'm obsessed with this now like I'm never going to use a brush again. This sponge is so, so cute and it allows me to get super, super close and it'd be really comfortable as well. But yeah, I mixed my RCMA No Color Powder with the Bare Minerals Well Rested Powder, which I think is actually a powder concealer. So this gave me maximum coverage and really, really brightened up underneath my eyes, as you can see. where this is literally like airbrush in a powder it's magic but it didn't look like she had lots going on underneath her eyes so I just took the lightest transition color and applied mascara and that is the eyes finished I never like to just leave the under eye completely bare I think it looks nice when you tie it all together so using a really light color uh, worked well for this for bronzer I'm taking the MAC care blend the studio care blend powder in dark on a duo fiber brush and just using that to bronze and kind of define my cheekbones and everything a bit more not necessarily to contour with because it's quite a warm product but just placing it in all the places that obviously I want to reduce and look I literally just went from pale to like a bronzed goddess oh my god I just no no not a bronze goddess just looking super bronze speaking of which I'm taking the NARS luster blusher because she never really wears anything noticeably pink on her cheeks I, f I find and this one is just a really really nice bronze rose gold color and has a bit of a shimmer the tiniest flush of pink so I thought it was perfect for this look for the highlight I am taking the one from the chocolate bar Bon Bon oh my god I can't talk today from the Bon Bon palette and just applying that to the tops of my cheekbones it was such a nice formula I'm not even sure is this an eyeshadow or is it a face highlight but whatever it is I really really like it and I'm just taking this Morphe brush and just placing that on the tops of my cheekbones in my nose and on my cupid's bow as well I swear this voiceover I've actually just chatted like the most random stuff ever anyway speaking of Oh my god, not even speaking of. Onto the lips, I'm lining them with Spice from MAC and then applying this Ofra liquid lipstick in Bel Air and you can use the code Rachel Leary for 30% off, I believe. All my discount codes are always in the description down below. But yeah, I'm just applying that onto my lips. She definitely had more of a brown, warmer tone nude going on. So this color is perfect and I'm obsessed with how it came out. It looks like a proper Kylie Jenner lip, if I do say so myself. Anyone else find that weirdly satisfying to watch? Anyways, onto gloss, I'm applying this Kiko Super Dazzle Gloss. It's either in 113 or 112. I can't remember, but I've definitely linked it down below along with all the other products that I've used. And that is the finished makeup look. Like I said, I'm obsessed with the way this came out. Pink glitter and me are just meant to be, and I love a glossy nude lip, as you know. Now onto the hair, I am just taking two front bits. This is kind of like the shortest layer of my hair, so if you guys have layers in your hair, just take two of the shortest layers at the front, and then I kind of pinned them together so they weren't in the way or like flapping about or distracting me. And then with my hairbrush, I'm just taking back all my hair kind of from the above my ear and back, but in like a half up, half down. So not like my whole hair, just the kind of top half of my hair, if that makes sense. You can kind of see what I'm doing from the video and then just brushing it back. And then with all of that, taking the middle part of that section and bringing it forward, um, because we're gonna give that bit serious volume, but yeah, just tying that one back in a ponytail so it's out the way and not distracting us. Yeah, like I said, with that bit that we just pulled forward, we're going to really backcomb it. And then I'm taking this Bardo, like, dry shampoo to give it loads and loads of volume because Ari had so much volume in her hair. I'm just spraying that at the roots and then kind of letting it fall down and then molding it to the top of my head. Definitely make sure you've backcombed it enough so it stays upright. And then I'm just pinning it back. 
on top of the ponytail that we kind of tied back, if that makes sense. So you've got a little quiff going on. Super easy and it's super put together, but she definitely had a bit of a curl to her hair. So I'm just taking my Bellamy at six in one curling wand and the largest barrel and just kind of holding them for like a really short amount of time because they weren't really tight curls. They were quite loose and beachy, which is my absolute favorite. And then at the front, I'm only really concentrating the curl at the bottom of the hair, if that makes sense, because they weren't um, ringlets. They were just kind of had a little curl at the end. And yeah, then I'm going back in with the dry shampoo that I used earlier to give it lots and lots of extra volume. And then I'm going in with the Bardo finishing spray as kind of like to give my hair a bit of shine and to make sure everything is locked in place. I'm obsessed with this hair. It literally is so, so, so easy, but looks really formal and put together, which is definitely why I wanted to include it. So that is the finished look. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Like I say, always, I love inspired looks. So let me know in the comments down below anyone's anything else that you want to see, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.